This week on Battle of Wits, Sean Pollan, Daniel Karen, Heather Hurst, and your host, Elspeth Wright. Welcome to Battle of Wits. I'm your host, Elspeth Wright, and we are at episode 10. And oh my goodness, what an episode we have for you today. Joining us, we have Sean Cullen. Hello. <laughs> Thank Hello. You. Hi, Elspeth. Woo. Hi. Thank you so much for being on. I'm very excited. It's my pleasure to be here. It's where else would I be? You know, it's that kind of time, <laughs> but I love it. It's great to see your mannequin. It's great to see uh, your plants, everything. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, we also have Daniel Karen. Hello, Daniel. Hello, thank you for having me. I had a busy schedule. I don't know about you guys. Yeah. I had to squeeze this in, but well, thank you so, so much. Happy, so happy you could make the time. And joining us from bustling Times Square, we have Heather Hurst. Hello, Heather. Hi, how are you? I am fantastic, thank you. How are you? So, so great to be here. I just got a pretzel from a street vendor and <laughs> I hugged an Elmo. Ah, oh, very nice, very <laughs> there nice. We go. Breaking all the rules, hugging people out in public. If, well, I, I also just don't think you should ever hug the Elmo, so, you know, <laughs> yeah. what does it matter now? Yeah, that's a fair point. All right, let's get this show on the road with the warm up round. In the warm up round, I will ask you some interesting questions, and the point will go to whoever gives the best answer. I went with a bit of a theme this week. Normally, I just sort of find weird stuff, but this week, I went with old timey products slash old like medical remedies. So that's what the theme of these questions are about. Let's see how it goes. Our first question, I actually have a lovely picture to show you. Mm. My first question is, wow. what, what was this for? What was this for? Daniel, I could hear you were audibly taken aback when you saw this. So uh, you go first. What was this for, Daniel? I mean, this is clearly a prop from an old horror film about, a, <laughs> about an ice monster. Uh, I've never seen this movie, but it looks terrifying. Okay. Sounds good. I like that. Uh, Sean, what do you think this product was for? This was for a very erotic cocktail hour, <laughs> 50s, highly erotic. People would have a, a woman over, or a man, depending on what you're into, and they would put on this mask and then pour Kahlua over their faces, and you would sit down by their shoulders or their lapels there and just lap the Kahlua from their dripping faces. And, uh, you know, it was incredibly erotic, in mm. one of the most erotic, situations <laughs> that occurred in the 1950s. It does sound erotic. Also, it sounds like it might be dangerous if you're allergic to bees. Oh, true, because bees love Kahlua. They do, more than, more than anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can't catch a bees without Kahlua, as the saying goes. My grandmother used to say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you catch more bees with Kahlua than with Prosecco. Mm, that's yeah. <laughs> she was a mean drunk, my grandmother. Oh, so violent. I couldn't believe it. Oh, man. Uh, this is question one, and the, the trauma is already coming out. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Heather, oh. what do you think this product was for? Oh, I actually recognize this because my mother had one of these. And this was, uh, this was actually one of the first um, tools that was given to women as part of the feminist uh, toolbox. And this is uh, meant to uh, ice down and cool down your face and head when you're tired from a day of screaming at the patriarchy. <laughs> 
yeah so not yeah, enough no. I, not enough ice cubes on it not enough ice no cubes there's it. not <laughs> there's not but you know it also came in handy for hangovers and uh pms but we weren't allowed to talk about it then very good yeah, they had another one for pms as well yeah. <laughs> a different part of the box <laughs> Oh. For pants. I, I would actually fun. pay money for that right now. Mm -hmm. Ice packs. <laughs> Ice packs for that. I feel like that would never, I feel like it's usually heat tends to work, but to each their own. In the 50s. <laughs> yeah, In the 50s, it did. <laughs> In the 50s, it was ice. Ice for everything. Mm -hmm. So the correct answer, Heather, you actually, oops. Oh, no. oh my gosh, don't you tell me You actually right. got it. <laughs> Kind of, <laughs> kind of correct. So it's actually a hangover heaven. It was originally developed to uh, depuff your face because you know mm -hmm. putting ice on your face is good for puffiness. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of actresses would use it for their cheeky actress hangovers that they had. Which, yeah. Honestly, I, mean, I get it. <laughs> I think Joan Collins actually uh, started marketing these. That's yeah. beautiful. I would yeah. actually, there have been days, there have been days <laughs> where I would have paid to have something like that around. 100%. Mm -hmm. oh. I just, love I love it. the look in her eye, just sort of like, I don't know, she's just <laughs> so checked out. It's very distant, very yeah. distant. Yeah. Just, don't talk to me have to make dinner for the husband exactly <laughs> old hollywood magic that beautiful okay our second question is in the late 19th and early 20th century this was said to effectively treat asthma hay fever foul breath all diseases of the throat every single one of them uh head colds canker sores and bronchial irritations so it's quite a hefty list that this magical remedy could treat uh sean what do you think it was i'm going to think back to those times uh and uh, my great grandfather who suffered from all of those things he had asthmatic bronchitis bronchitis he was a wreck but smoking, I think, is what they said. Smoking, uh, tobacco, tobacco products. All right, very good. Uh, Heather, what is your guess? Oh, I, you know, I'm going to go with the tried and true cocaine. Mm. It, it wasn't just in Coca-Cola for no good reason. Cocaine ails what cures you, and then you can put on one of those face masks. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> they did love cocaine back then. They were... <laughs> They were ahead of their time. Yeah, it was like the 80s back then. And it, then <laughs> the 1880s. The 1980s. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Daniel, what is your guess? Boy, this is a tough one. Uh, you know, I'm a romantic, so I'm going to say uh, ki uh, the cure was kissing. Mm. I'm going to say oh. kissing was marketed Aww. to cure all of these things. That's you know, you have a boo boo, you kiss it better, you have some bronchitis. Yeah, you kiss the canker sore, absolutely. It makes it better. Okay, okay. I will not be coming to you for any medical advice, but uh, good guess. I like, I like your enthusiasm and your romantic spirit. Sean, you're you. actually- my open heart. Yes. You're actually correct. It was smoking. There was a thing called specifically marketed asthma cigarettes. Nice. And they were recommended for everyone except children under six years of age. Oh, well. So, you know. well, you don't want them playing with matches, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's yeah, nothing exactly. more depressing than having a five year old say, hey, can I bomb a smoke off you? Yeah. It's but if gross. they're six, it's fine. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. They know what they want when they're six. Yeah. They're I've in given school. plenty of six year old <laughs> cigarettes, and it's. <laughs> Menthols. Menthols. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah kids like menthols what can we say no this is from the victorian era heather what is it uh well it's uh clearly um see back then they were they were very proper and there were certain things you couldn't talk about 
in public. And so this was a gentleman's uh, si signal to women uh, that he enjoyed the cunnilingual arts. Oh. <laughs> Get his mustache out of the way so he could like wiggle his yeah. tongue at them? Yes, it's called a muff duster. Sweet. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I apologize to my grandmother if she is watching this episode. I also apologize <laughs> if it's right. Okay, uh, Daniel, what do you think? Boy, this well, is? you know, I'm a messy eater myself. I eat, uh, I eat a soup, a stew, I get it all over my shirt. And uh, same goes for the mustache. I think this is a soup slash stew mustache protector. A, a bib, good. a mustache bib. A mustache bib, very good, very and good. And I don't think it worked. Mm. Why don't you think it worked? <laughs> Does the, the, the picture not look sturdy or? No, it looks, <laughs> <laughs> this thing's gonna melt in a heartbeat. I don't, I don't trust mm. this thing. It's actually made out of fruit roll up, so it does melt pretty mm, well. Delicious. <laughs> Uh, Sean, what do you think this is? Well, that's a great answer, Daniel, and I fear it's the right one. But if I'm looking at it, I, fear, I think uh, men, when they were wanted to take a quick snooze or go to sleep, their mustaches often, while they were lying down, would fly up into their nostrils and suffocate <laughs> them. So they had to have <laughs> a weighted uh, mustache restraint machine to hold their mustache in place while they slept to avoid uh, asphyxiation. So I'm gonna say it's a uh, asphyxiation safety device. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Uh, Daniel was the closest. I'm gonna give that one to him. Also to Shocked. tie the game up to keep things interesting. Uh, all sure. very good answers though. You're all incorrect though. So it's actually a mustache trainer. Oh. Yeah. So is it going to the Olympics? It is. Yes. Wow. If yeah. your mustache is going the wrong way, it trains it to grow the right way. Exactly. Yes. That. So if you want a nice, well-trained mustache, you can use. If worn for five minutes in the morning, it trains any mustache for all day to the shape desired. It overcomes objectional, objectionable features of a mustache. Oh, there are so many. So, so many. They are disgusting mustaches, let's be honest. Turn that mustache upside down. <laughs> exactly. It's like Viagra for your mustache. Yeah. Uh, it's defying gravity. We have our final question of the warm-up round. You each have one point, so, you know, time to get, Viagra. yeah, time to get tough. What was the ancient Babylonian cure for teeth grinding? Daniel, uh, what was the ancient Babylonian cure for teeth grinding? The ancient Babylonian cure for teeth grinding, I'm going to say, cut out the middleman, uh, remove the teeth. Mm, yeah. If you, if you grind them too much, you obviously want them gone. So let's just, let's just get it over with. That's fair. It's logical. Thank you. <laughs> it is extreme, but Babylon was a wild, wild place. Mm. And they were known for their soups, actually. So it'd be fine if you had no teeth. Just have some delicious Babylonian soup. And that mustache soup. guard. With yeah. the mustache guard, you're safe. Yeah. Good to go. Yeah. Uh, Heather, what do you think was the ancient Babylonian cure for teeth grinding? Uh, the same one that works today. Finger up the bum. Mm. Finger up the bum. Ends it every time. While, while they're sleeping or just like if you're like soon, soon as you know, As soon as you notice the teeth grinding, finger up the bum. Done. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it All doesn't, right. it's not as acceptable in public, but I'm assuming we're talking about them sleeping here. So mm. yeah. Yeah. I'm very aware of my teeth grinding now and very happy that my mannequin does not have arms. There you <laughs> Good thing. Ooh. Or is Babylonia. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right, Sean, what do you think was the cure for teeth grinding? Well, in Babylon, what they would have another Babylonian is the cure for teeth grinding. And while you were sleeping, if you were grinding your teeth, another Babylonian would slap you in the face. 
Mm. It'd wake you up, and then your teeth would stop grinding, and then you'd go back to sleep, and they'd slap you again until you learned <laughs> not to grind your teeth. That's, That's the way the Babylonians were. They're tough. Yeah, they were slap happy people. I've they heard were in my slap studies happy. in the in the Tigris Euphrates Valley. Yes. <laughs> note the Babylonian yeah. knowledge. Well yeah. done for that. And because your answer is the closest, I will give Sean the point. So the cure really? was actually <laughs> to sleep with a skull next to you. So in a way, another Babylonian. Oh. They oh. thought that teeth grinding was uh, a result of being possessed. Oh. So if you slept with a skull next to you, it could like transfer the demon. And if it didn't work after a week or so, they would uh, suggest that you lick or kiss the skull <laughs> throughout the night. Mm. And then no more teeth grinding. That sounds amazing. Yeah. I'm sure I'd rather have a finger up the bone. Yeah, I think all of your <laughs> answers sound much better. <laughs> The skeletal of finger up the bum would be good. Mm. Skeletal. Ooh. Yeah. That'd be a little it. easier. Yeah. Yeah. Rib, ribbed for your pleasure. Oh, uh, that's a different <laughs> part of the body. You never know. I mean, the hole's a hole. Not forever. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. All right. At the end of round one, Daniel and Heather both have one point, and Sean is in the lead with two points. Ooh, very nice. Yay. Now it is time for round two. In this round, I will tell you some interesting words, and you will tell me the definition. Our first word is pandiculation. Pandiculation. Sean, since you are in the lead, could you please tell me what does pandiculation mean? Uh, I think it is, hmm, diculate. What is to diculate? Pan is all, all diculations. <laughs> Let's see, what if you speak all languages, pandiculation? Very good, very good. Good Ooh. thought process. I, you had me fooled for a second. I like it. Or maybe you had me amazed that you have the right answer. <laughs> oh. uh, Heather, what is your guess for a pandiculation? Um, this is the ability to speak to pandas. Mm. Usually involving hand gestures. Mm. Very good, very good. What sort of things do you say to pandas? Uh, you say... Hello, mm. may I have your bamboo? Have you fornicated this decade? Mm. Yeah. Things like that. That's typically uh, typically the kind of you know questions you ask. Usually yeah. the answers are no and no. It, it's a simple language. It's not hard to learn. Those are usually the answers I ask on or the questions I ask on first dates as well. So it's, it's very interesting that those are the, the questions you ask. Uh, <laughs> I think they're I think they're solid. If it works for a panda, it can work for you. Yes. <laughs> Daniel, what is your guess for pendiculation? Well, boy, I think you know. I'm pretty sure it's um, it's the act of panhandling. Mm. Uh, so you know, if you see you see somebody going around asking for change, you say, "Oh, they're." They're engaging in pendiculation. Okay. And then you give good. them the money. I'm pretty sure that's true. <laughs> you, damn pen, you damn pendiculators should get a job. Right? Rude. <laughs> hey, I didn't say it. I didn't say it. <laughs> Daniel, you're canceled for even. Okay. <laughs> I am going to give that one to Heather just because I like pandas. So I did not know cool. that in my defense. I did <laughs> yeah, not know yeah. that in advance. Uh, the actual answer is generally defined as the act of stretching and yawning when you wake up. So, you know, when you do one of those, uh, sure. You're I'm, a pan I'm a regular <laughs> pandiculator. Mm -hmm. I do that throughout the day. <laughs> 
Love a good stretch. Since lately yeah. we've been living in a waking nightmare, so maybe I'm just always waking up. <laughs> <laughs> Our next word is doodle sack. Doodle sack. Heather, <laughs> can you please tell me what is a doodle sack? Um, it's a, it's a fancy name for a pencil case. <laughs> you, keep, you keep your colored pencils and your eraser and maybe your little sharpener in there and that little stack and then you're able to doodle wherever you go as long as you have your doodle sack with you. That's an adorable answer. I love it. Very Thank good. You. <laughs> uh, Daniel, what is a doodle sack? Uh, a doodle sack is a fancy term for your testicle case. <laughs> and uh Scrotum. you know it's a it's you can you wherever you go you can doodle if you have your doodle sack okay much like heather's answer yeah <laughs> <laughs> you're a doodle sack oh no fighting you guys come on okay all right all right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, doodle sacks. okay sean what is your answer what is a doodle sack well, it's uh, a doodle sack is a medieval word for what people would use to carry around their things in, like a, a little handbag. You know, you have your doodle sack with all of your little knickknacks, and uh, maybe you want to give it a paddywhack, and then you dog, <laughs> you give it a bone. <laughs> knickknack, used to be knickknack, doodle sack, give your dog a bone. But they changed it because no one knew what a doodle sack it. was anymore. Oh, very good. Now, what were some uh, old-timey uh, Middle Ages doodle sack knickknacks? Well, you you'd probably it? have a, a stylus. Uh, you'd probably have a wax tablet. You might have <laughs> some string. You might have uh, a small a bag of herbs to put up to your nose when you're walking by rotting sewage mm. so that you wouldn't have to smell it. Uh, and probably, uh, I don't know, uh, <laughs> uh, sexual, sexual aids of some kind, a small yeah. bronze yeah. penis that you might use on yourself. <laughs> All right. Just, All kinds just, of bric-a-brac. Just like <laughs> bric-a-brac in the doodle sack. Bric-a-brac in the doodle sack. Bric exactly. Bring it back. Just the normal stuff you'd have to carry today. Bring it back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Only it's not made of bronze anymore. Mm, no. I mean... Uh, okay, it I'm going to up as you use it. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But, Most uh, things do. What I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, I am going to give Sean the point because uh, I forgot the other answers and this was good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> the, the wow. Distracting answer is very good. <laughs> Okay, so doodle sack is actually slang for bagpipes. Oh, so you know how oh. bag people who oh. play bagpipes love using hip slang. Uh, yeah, of course. Doodle sack. That's a nice doodle sack you've got there. <laughs> it's a oh, lovely it, doodle sack. It's a, bonny, it's a bonny doodle sack. Nice. <laughs> you can <laughs> really blow on that know. thing, can you? <laughs> Nothing touches me more emotionally than going to a funeral and hearing a beautiful doodle sack. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's, uh, oh, it's so emotional hearing the doodle sack. Hearing yeah. Danny Boy on the doodle sack, just <laughs> yeah. thinking about uh, it. Uh, goosebumps. Goosebumps everywhere. Yeah. Okay, we have one word left in this round, and that word is fartlek. Fartlek. So, Daniel, can you tell me what is the meaning of fartlek? A fartlek, I know this actually, is a small uh, a small bird found in the South Pacific or even northern sort of Australia area. And it's it hops around on two legs and it smells terrible. Mm. People don't like to eat it. There's a lot of them. Uh, but yeah, it's a cute little bird. It makes a horrible little tweeting sound. I don't want to try to recreate it, but it is a uh, small bird in the South Pacific. Could you could you try to recreate it though? Let me try here. Um, <clears throat> did you hear that? I have a fart machine. Thank you, thank you. I used it. I wasn't going to because I was embarrassed, but I used a fart sound. Ah, uh, well done. Never I like be embarrassed. Never be embarrassed. Thank you. I appreciate that. I love that you just had the fart machine handy. I'm. <laughs> 
I always have a fart machine handy. <laughs> I'm worried about it. It's you, in my Daniel. doodle sack. <laughs> that's okay. what you can yes. That's what you would carry in a doodle sack for sure. <laughs> for sure. Uh, Sean, what is a fart lick? Well, I'm reminded of like in uh, Shakespeare, uh, uh, Hamlet says, who would fartle spare? And I wonder if it has something, and fartles are difficult times, but I don't know if a fart lick is related to that or not. I think it's probably a more dangerous version of the Doctor Who dialects. Ah. Fart licks, who come in and spray farts at people. <laughs> <laughs> And so foil the plans of Doctor Who. If that's the case, my nephews are both little fartlicks. Um, They're fartlicks. Yeah. Uh, Heather, what is a fartlick? Uh, a fartlick is actually a Scandinavian term for a uh, for running without a set pace, and it's a it's a way that uh, long distance runners use to train to improve their cardiovascular. Uh, ability in a nice. uh, lot yeah yeah heather Fartlek. you hey. are correct i know <laughs> <laughs> are you Fartlek. a runner are you a runner are you a fart licker heather i have done my share of fart licking yes of course uh yes i uh i did uh for a time uh run half marathons oh, uh, wow. was lucky and was lucky enough to go and run a, a half marathon in Reykjavik Iceland so a That's fartlek is something I Whoa. actually did know <laughs> I, I was like <laughs> I know this word well well done and uh yes the point goes to you nice at the end of that <laughs> round Heather has three points Sean has three points and Daniel you're More? a champion of our hearts you have one point, but there's still time as we go into round three. Now it is time for two truths and one lie. In this round, you will each tell three stories, two of which are true, one is a lie, and we will all interrogate you and then uh, guess which we think is the lie. Uh, Daniel, since you have done the live show before, I'm going to get you to go first to show them how it's done. So Daniel, can you please tell me what are your two truths and one lie? Okay, well, it's, uh, I'm doing the bad boy edition. Ah, uh, you're two known, you're known to be a bad boy. So, so these, are, these are three sentences. I snuck into the Queen Latifah talk show. I prank called my own grandmother on several occasions. <laughs> or I stole bowling shoes from a bowling alley. Very good. Okay. Would you uh, like to... Sean, you can ask the first question. Who was the guest on the Queen Latifah talk show you snuck into? A very good question. We did not get to the guest. It was the opening sort of monologue type of thing, and then we were sort of ushered out. Who is with you? My friend, Chris Sandiford. Okay. okay. Uh, tracks. Uh, that is all, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what city does Queen Latifah taper show in? Beautiful, sunny Los Angeles, California. Okay, and why were you in Los Angeles? We were seeing a taping of Jeopardy <laughs> and we kind of snuck off afterwards and caught the Queen Latifah talk show. If that's true, I'm jealous that you saw a taping of Jeopardy and I'm not ashamed to admit it. Uh, okay, uh, Sean, do you have another question? Um, oh, about any of the three? Yeah, about any of the three. Uh, how old is your grandmother? Right now? Yeah. Unfortunately, she is. She has passed away. Oh, okay. And she fine. has. She was passed away when I prank called her. Trying to get oh, sympathy points. No, that's not points. true. That's not no. true. <laughs> what would? What was the? How would you prank call your grandma? Like, would you call and be like, oh, like ask, like say dumb things and be like, oh, it's me, Daniel, or like. A lot of uh, a lot of st stupid voices asking for dumb names. For like, excuse me, is 
uh, Mr. Fartlek there? Sort of that sort of stuff. Okay. And then hang up immediately. Okay. And how would she react to this? Very confused. (laughs) Was did not just didn't know why anyone was calling her, especially why not why they were giggling. (laughs) Didn't make sense. (laughs) All right. How old How old were you when you were doing these prank calls? When did the quarantine start? Uh, (laughs) No, I was probably. 13? Yeah, so about the time the quarantine started. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, What size bowling shoe do you wear? Not to brag, but I'm a 12. (laughs) (laughs) You know that they size them up, right? You're only 11 and a half. (laughs) That's what they say. That's me. Uh, I've been told I'm a 12 at a different bowling alleys, all right? So I don't know know what any of this means. I apologize. (laughs) What bowling alley was it? It was the Rose Bowl in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Okay. (laughs) Okay. How did you steal the shoes? Like, did you just walk out with them on? Yes. Accidentally? No. Okay, Sean, do you have a These are in my bad boy days. Oh, okay. Do you have a final question for Daniel about his bad boy lifestyle? It's pretty insane. Uh, What kind of (laughs) shoes did you leave behind when you walked out with the bowling shoes? I took my old shoes and also the new shoes. We didn't leave nothing behind. Great band. Okay. All right. Thank you. Heather, do you have a final question? No, I'm ready to guess. All right. Uh, Sean, what is your guess? My guess is uh, the bowling shoe story is the lie. Okay. Heather, what is your guess? My guess is the Queen Latifah story is the lie. I think he snuck into another show. Ah, so you do think he Ooh. he snuck into a show, just not Queen Latifah? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, Daniel, what is the lie? I have never seen Queen Latifah in my life. Oh, <laughs> well done. I did go to Jeopardy. I did go to a Jeopardy <laughs> taping, but then I just remember Queen Latifah banner, and then I made up a fun lie about it. Very good. So, Daniel, <laughs> you get one point, and Heather, hey. you get one point. Woohoo! Well done. Uh, good lies. Good lies. I thought the grandma thing was the lie, to be honest. You got me. You got me with the Queen Latifah. <laughs> Because uh, usually it's the most boring one, so it's like... Yeah, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Uh, Heather, yes. could you tell us your two truths in one lie, please? All right. Um, my three stories are that I once flirt, well, actually twice, flirted with a uh, prominent member of the Kennedy family. Mm. Story number two is that I professionally danced in a go-go cage during my university days. And story number three is that I uh, once got to hang out with the Foo Fighters after Mm. a concert. Yeah. Okay, I will Mm -hmm. open the floor for questioning. Uh, Daniel, what is your first question for Heather? Uh, Were the Foo Fighters nice? (laughs) So... (laughs) so nice like really no like truthfully I didn't get near Dale girl I'm not going to lie like that was a little bit much but like the rest of them were very (laughs) 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 but but uh no everyone was uh everyone was super cool chill yeah very loose okay loose hanging guys yeah Cool. All right. Uh, Sean, what is your first question? Is the Kennedy you flirted with still alive? Mm. Yes. Yes, he well, is. Who is he then? Yeah. Yeah, well, really, is it, I was going to ask, uh, <laughs> is it on purpose a secret or was it just um, fun for the title? Um, like, I could tell you, I don't know if I should tell you now or later. Like, I'm just, I, I don't know, because I don't know where the questions are going to go. And I'm trying to, like, determine mm. he's alive. And he has a family, and he's prominent, and I just uh, like, uh, 
I don't know. He's going to ruin it. his life with this online <laughs> yes. Zoom quiz show. The last Listen, episode but, got like 200 they were, words, so, you know, it's going to go. <laughs> <laughs> they were innocent times, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The but, uh, was, he was he was a he's a son of one of the Kennedys, if that helps. Yeah. I don't know. And was it a fun t- flirting with him? He was a good flirter. <laughs> it was it was uh, like I was I was shocked because I was just like, uh, why is he why he's who he is? Why is he flirting with me? And then I was like, oh, he's a Kennedy. It's mm. in their DNA. Yeah, but. Um, yeah, I, but then I was shocked at how bold I was because all these pe- people were asking for pictures with him and I walked over and I straightened his tie for him. Like I, I, oh, I yeah, ooh. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who I was, but my girlfriends <laughs> were like, oh my God. Like, you know. straightened mm. his tie. <laughs> the euphemism yeah. for the, Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sean, I'm not I hear gonna, you. I hear not, you. I, I don't like to use words incorrectly. Were you alone in the cage or were you <laughs> multiple uh, people in the cage? Where, what, how, did it, how did that work? Uh, I, we would dance one at a time in the cage. Uh, it was, uh, it had a black light in the top. We had to wear like white and, you know, neon clothing. So it would glow in the dark. And then we would like rotate like 15 minutes an hour dancing in the cage. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Sean, do you have any further questions? What was the first story again? I've forgotten. Yeah, I did as well. First story was flirting with the Kennedy. Second, second was, one, second was go-go. dancing in the go-go cage. And the third one was hanging out with the Foo Fighters. Oh, right, oh, right. Okay. okay. Uh, where was this go-go cage? And what, was it in a club? It was in Club Cosmopolitan in Fredericton, New Brunswick. Oh, no! This oh, yeah. Hottest, hottest go-go action in this country. <laughs> yeah. Listen, you, yeah. I'm from New Brunswick, and I just have to ask, what were you doing in New Brunswick? Uh, okay. What every girl <laughs> is doing in New Brunswick, going to law school. Uh, <laughs> this is, yeah, it was how I paid the bills while I was going to law school. Okay, okay. Uh, which, which school did you go to law school at? Uh, University of New Brunswick okay. in Fredericton. NB. Yeah, you and right. the A fine school. A fine school. Okay. Any further questions? Hmm. No, I think I know. <clears throat> Ooh, confident. Yeah. Oh, I'm very curious because I believe Actually, the go go dancer one, but just imagining go go dancers in New Brunswick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't like I feel like they're illegal (laughs) (laughs) let me ask one more question actually I'm sorry one more who opened for the Foo Fighters who opened for the Foo Fighters Arctic Monkeys oh all right oh really (laughs) oh really Mm. okay all right okay Daniel what is your guess I don't think (laughs) she met the Foo Fighters okay I don't okay. think they're that accessible. <laughs> you know, anyone can walk up to a Kennedy, but uh, Dave Grohl. Anyone wow. can. No, I don't know. I, I'm going to guess the Foo Fighters. Yeah. Okay, uh, Sean, what is your guess? I'm going to guess that the go-go dancing is the lie. Yeah. Same. Heather, what is the lie? I've never gotten near the Foo Fighters. Ah! Oh, oh, so again, God. Daniel. One, one and point to Daniel from behind. and one yeah. point to Heather. Yeah. Woo! Well done. Well done. All I'm right. a logical liar. <laughs> they were all lies. They're all lies. No. No. John, what are your two truths and one lie? Well, I uh, I'm a good friend of the lead singer of the uh, Men at Work. Uh, the Australian band. Uh, I broke my neck as a child, falling three feet off of a climbing bar, like a little climber mm-hmm. in our backyard. Uh, and I uh, once saw, uh, once saw Lionel Richie right up close, and his head is enormous. 
Hmm. Okay. Uh, Heather, what is your first question? Uh, how old were you exactly when you uh, fell off the climbing bar and broke your neck? Six. Six. Okay. In your backyard, you said. Yes, we had a little rusty climbing bar machine. And, I and fell. then did you have to wear a brace after? Was there surgery? I had to get a brace, but my, my mother took me to the hospital and she's a nurse. And she said, if you're not really injured, like I got up and I was walking around and she said, if you're not really injured, you're going to embarrass me a lot. And I said, well, <laughs> hurts when I do this. And so they went in and x-rayed me and uh, they said, there's nothing wrong. And I went back and then the night I woke up and I was screaming in pain because my neck was hurting. So they took me back in and my mother was even more mortified but they took an, another x-ray from a different angle and saw that I had a tiny fracture in my oh neck. Oh my goodness. And wow. uh, they had to put me in a, you know, just something, it was because your kids, your bones are very pliable, but they put me in a kind of thing to restrain me and keep me from moving my head. And wow. they had it work its way out. Jeez, how long did you have to wear that? For about eight months. Wow. It was fun. Oh. People liked it. <laughs> kids, it. Kids are kind. Did you get it signed by your, uh, your school? Everyone. Mates? I got it signed by the Foo Fighters. <laughs> <laughs> no way you got close to those guys. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's impossible. Okay, I have a question okay. for you. Yeah. You say Lionel Richie's head is enormous. Is Colin Hay's head enormous? Colin Hay has got a normal size head, pretty much. It's a normal called, size. but it's about it's a it's a proportionate size. Okay. Okay. Uh, where and did you? Oops, sorry. Where no, did no, you, please. Where did you see Lionel Richie? At uh, the Jay Leno show, I used to do uh, correspondent work for the Jay Leno. Uh, what is it called? The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Oh. <laughs> he was a guest, and his head was big, and okay. scared me a bit. <laughs> So it was like, not just like, oh, wow, it was like startlingly. Well, it was like a puppet's head. It was like a puppet's head with a tiny man, marionette body underneath it. It was mm. freaky. He is quite a slim man. So I feel like if his head was large, it'd be okay. Yeah. And we, I, I'm, I don't know if anybody's ever seen the video, uh, Hello. Yeah. It's quite a creepy video and there's yeah. a bust of his head in it. And, mm -hmm. it's, and it's awful. That actually used to be my mannequin's head, but it was stolen um, oh my God. by time travelers who used no. it to make that video. Well, as long as they, uh, you got some use out of it. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Heather, <clears throat> any further questions? How, um, how did you meet and become friends with the, uh, mm. with the lead singer Minute Work? Well, he used to do tours, uh, and we used to tour in a lot of the same places. When in Edinburgh, I, I ran into him in Edinburgh and in, in Australia, where he's from. Uh, and you know, he would do a one-man kind of show after this is long after the band broke up, really. But he would just do kind of storytelling and singing his his own solo stuff, and that's how I kind of got to know him. Okay. And you're still like in correspondence? You send Christmas cards? Yes. Or, yeah. yes. Not Christmas. Have you ever yeah. sang <laughs> have you ever sang one of his songs with him? He doesn't really do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just to, <laughs> he doesn't making really sure you're not alive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Any any more questions, Daniel or Heather? Um I don't think so. Mm -hmm. How does your neck feel right now? Mm. Well, it's fine. It, it, I never really suffered any kind of long-term, just stiffness after, you know, the brace came off. But that, you know, it's nothing real, not, nothing really lasting. Just okay. the, on, the ongoing addiction to attention. And yeah. coding. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and coding. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. My mother had tons of it. She was yeah. a nurse. Yeah. Well, that's fair. Mm -hmm. oh, damn it. Kids I don't love know. coding. Yeah. No, I can't. Mm. I can't. Tell. I know. You know? Okay, then, Daniel, what is your guess? Just like you can't get close to the Foo Fighters, you can't get that close to Lionel Richie. 
No way you saw him. I, I think he has a famously large head. I don't think you saw it live. Ooh, that's okay. Right. Uh, I saw him outside of my friend's apartment once in Hong Kong. So I don't know. You can't get close to him. I'm, I'm skeptical. And how was that um, head? The it question was, it was actually very large. It's enormous. Yeah. We all accept that. Yeah, everyone has. <laughs> it's the, it's the question was, did he get cl close to yeah. him? That's the question. <laughs> Heather, oh, what is your guess? Uh, I am going to... I am going to say that the falling off and breaking the neck is the lie. I don't think he broke his neck. I think the rest of it is true, but I don't think the neck breaking is, I think that's where I'm going. That's where I'm going to, you know, okay. draw my line in the sand. All right, Sean, what is the lie? Well, it was my arm, it was my oh, neck. Oh, well done. Yeah, Heather, you killed it in this round. I, yes, I am a great liar and a great recognizer of lies. <laughs> <laughs> I've been I've been single and dating for well over ten years. Mm -hmm. I can spot a lie a mile away. Teach me your ways. <laughs> I will. I I hope I don't have to. <laughs> yep. Okay, so at the end of that round, Daniel has three points. Oh. Sean has four points, and Heather, who, taken off with a vengeance with six points. Oh, Jesus. That, <laughs> okay. oh, oh, my good Lord. It is now time for the how much round. In this round, I will show you interesting things I found on the internet. And you will tell me how much they cost. Up I, first. I, I just want to unsee this. Oh, there's more to see. There's more to see, Heather. Just oh, you wait. Oh, God. Up first, I found this lovely gentleman on eBay. Mm -hmm. uh, the title for him is Moves, Haunted Doll, mm. Antique, Real Boy Spirit, Henry. So, Henry was a small boy, according to the description. In the 1800s, he chose this antique doll as his vessel. I am rehoming him. He mm. loves to mess with dogs and make them bark. Nice, playful spirit, likes to move a small ball and turn on and off a flashlight. So, it, in oh. Canadian dollars and including shipping, how much do you think beautiful, beautiful little Henry is? Does the teddy come with him? Is that uh, part of Henry's getup? Or are they just I trying to does, cover his does. enormous crotchal region? <laughs> yeah, he's, that's the thing, Henry. Mm. Heather, since you're in the lead, you oh. guess first. How much for beautiful spirit boy Henry? $2.99. Like two dollars and ninety nine cents or two hundred. No, two two hundred and ninety nine dollars. Okay. <laughs> I think I think that you know you can't undervalue the spirit of an eight, a boy from the eighteen hundreds. So That's true. That's yeah. true. They, they did at the time. <laughs> that is also well, true. <laughs> he got a vessel. I mean, yeah. that's pretty good. Get him a Shetland pony and send him to the mines. I say. He looks. Mm -hmm. He looks dirty. He looks like he's been in the mines. Then, Got a receding <laughs> hairline. Yeah. I'm I'm not gonna sleep tonight. That look is haunting. <laughs> can we can we not? Uh, <laughs> Once everyone is guessed, Henry will go All away. Right. <laughs> I, I'm I'm just gonna look away because his eyes are okay. freaking me out. They follow me around the room. <laughs> uh Sean, what is your guess? How much do you think? Do we have to go uh closest without going over? No, it's just closest to the regular <laughs> or just closest to the price. Yeah. Sean was going to come in with one dollar. It was going to no, raise his no, rights for rules. I think two ninety nine is too much. I'm going to okay. say. I'm going to say. I'm going to go ninety nine dollars. Ninety nine dollars. Okay. And Daniel, how much for beautiful Henry? Yeah, I was. I was going to go around that too, but now I'm going to. I'm going to bump it up. I'm going to go right in the middle. Two hundred. Two hundred. Okay, well, Heather, I know Henry was painful for you, but 
he does get you a point. Woohoo! Well done. Henry is for sale on eBay for four hundred fifty-one dollars and the real deal breaker for me, two cents. Okay. So <laughs> wow. yeah. Four cents yeah. makes all the difference. Yeah. I, I was going to buy him, and then I was like, two cents. I'll yeah. give you two cents. Keep yes. that freak away from me. <laughs> Keep your stinking doll. <laughs> if he wasn't so creepy, he could be cute, you know? It's, like, that's, that's I mean, almost that's, all men. It, this is pretty much <laughs> how I feel about, you know, online dating. But, yeah, yeah. He's got nice cheeks. It's the eyes that, you know. Yeah, a nice, a nice double chin. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I just feel like he looks both very, like he looks like an old man, but also very young. I like my boy's necklace with no <laughs> neck at all. Yeah. Just right from the chest to the chin. Yeah. 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 He looks, he reminds me of Robert Durst with those painted on eyebrows. Oh, yeah. Mm. And he doesn't blink. Just like yeah. Robert Durst. And he has the black eyes. That's Robert Durst. That's not Henry. And he has the soul of a killer. Yeah. 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 And he can move a ball and turn on a flashlight. Mm. <laughs> Most importantly. <laughs> right. I bet you he knows where Carol Baskin's ex-husband is. 100%. <laughs> Good segue. Speaking of Carol Baskin's and cats. <laughs> Here's our next item. So these I found on Wish. Uh, they are mirrored lenses, UV uh, eyeglasses, and they are from Wish. The description calls them fashion trend glasses. Make your pets lovely. <laughs> Metal frame, stylish and durable. Mm. It's another picture. And uh, my, my favorite part adorable. about finding this on Wish was I found this one five oh star gosh. review, which I mean, <laughs> Yeah, five stars. So this person said, they mm. don't look cheap or tacky. They are proper, they look like proper little sunglasses for my pet, lol. <laughs> so this picture has been bringing me joy all week and I think these sunglasses are undervalued based that's, on this image alone. <laughs> that's meme worthy for sure. Mm -hmm. It's so good. Uh, yeah. Sean, how much do you think these snazzy mirror, lend mirror lenses are? I'm going to say $24.99. $24.99, okay. Uh, Daniel, how much do you think they are? Well, they're priceless. It, yeah, clearly. Yeah. I, I, I think they're a, they're a clean $50. $50, okay. And Heather, how much do you think for these adorable pet sunglasses? This is per pair, right? It's yeah. not, you don't get the four no, pairs yeah. in it's, the beginning. Okay, all right, per pair? Yeah, uh, $15.98. Wow, well, it's good to know that all of you value these as much as I do. Uh, you're all way over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're three, three ninety nine on each. <laughs> So they are actually two dollars and wow. seventy six cents. Wow! So, so uh, steal, uh, steal. I don't, yeah. just for that picture. I I mean, I have no money, but if I had money to make a cat that happy, I would. I'd pay. It's adorable. Is he happy? Yeah. Oh yeah, he might. That might. He might be screaming. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see my food. How am I supposed to poop in a box if I can't see the box? That's true. Mm. I, 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 I thought about this all wrong. Oh, no. there's so much glare. I only <laughs> wish I could poop in my box <laughs> and have my eyes sheltered from the sun. Oh, you That's know what? what That's what it is. Yeah. He's, he's not embarrassed by these glasses. They've mm -hmm. made him wear a bow tie and a bell. He's got bigger fish to fry. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like he has a little wig as well. Oh, yeah, he does. Oh, no mm. doubt. Yeah. yeah. I'm feeling the, more and more sorry for him. The, is that a Hitler wig? Oh, it's an alfalfa <laughs> wig. Okay. Mm. He looks a bit like, uh, you know, uh, Andy Warhol. Mm. Yeah, I yes. see it. I see it. Oh, 
He is the Warhol cat. That's great. <laughs> Okay, well let's move on to our final item. Oh, bird. Yeah, nice. this beautiful boy is from Etsy. I bet so, it is. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> yeah. Are we all shocked by that? <laughs> no. So this is a taxidermy rat, flying oh. rat, oh. dyed, multicolored, winged, flying rodent is the title of it on Etsy. And the description is quite something. So, rogue... <laughs> Rogue taxidermy flying rat, rat with rainbow colored bird wings and wooden purple base. Let your freak flag fly. This rat is 24 centimeters tall, 40 mm. centimeters, 47 centimeters wide from wing to wing, and 25 centimeters thick. And you will be happy to know it was ethically sourced. So. Oh, so they found it dead in a... <laughs> yeah. In a, in <laughs> found a dead rat on the sidewalk. And, it killed uh, itself when it landed. <laughs> They're like, yeah. they strapped the wings to him and he flew immediately into the ground and that's how he died. Mm -hmm. mm. As, All right. Ethically sourced ethically rats. Sourced something rats. that you... That I always there. think about. There it are was a lot it, of them on Etsy. Was it ethically sourced? Is that how you found this one? Did you search ethically sourced rat art? <laughs> I have my ways. I can't, you know, I can't reveal all my No, secrets. don't, re don't divulge them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Daniel, what is your guess? Boy, I mean, I, I look, I'd like to pretend to make fun of this thing. I think it's a masterpiece. Uh, I'm going to give it I'm going to say it's going for $100. Okay. $100. Very good. It's very colorful. I like the purple on purple on purple. It's cool. I like that you think it was a masterpiece, so you said $100. Meanwhile, the little cat sunglasses <laughs> were 50 so masterpieces are exactly Those things were so cool. <laughs> Put glasses on this thing. Oh, then oh, it's worth that. millions. Mm -hmm. Then it's worth $102. Yes. <laughs> Okay, Heather, what is your guess for this? Well, rat? I mean, I, I think it's going to be a bit more than that, just because taxidermy is a difficult art, and clearly uh, a lot of effort went into the different dyeing of the various feathers in the wings. Mm -hmm. So I am going to put this in the $350 mark. $350? And oh, okay. it, it's art. This is original art. So yeah. $350, yeah. I think, yeah. Do you think that maybe the uh, the work they put into the the wings they could have done something about the look on its face? <laughs> so I have like, to be honest. Like when you when I laughed earlier, it was like straight on. He looks happy. Like he looks like he's having he's smiling. From you know, I think they maybe could have done a bit more in terms of eyes. I would have liked to mm. see maybe an eyebrow <laughs> addition, but I th like his mouth looks happy. So I think okay. uh, I think it's okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sean, how much do you think this uh, taxidermy flying rat is? Well, I think it is. Rats are dirt cheap. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's the artistry that you're paying for. Mm. So Agreed. I'm thinking, but I'm not, and I, I don't, I've, I'm going to regret it because people are idiots uh, and will pay anything for dumb crap. <laughs> So I'm going to say $59.99. $59.99. That's a bargain. Yeah, <laughs> that is a big bargain. And it is, unfortunately for you, incorrect. <sighs> Once again, coming through, Heather, you get you this know, one. You know, we girls love to shop. Girls, mm. girls love shopping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah How so much they, is it? It is actually... Two hundred and seventy-seven dollars oh and forty-three god. cents. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> I have a oh, nail. Yeah. I have a nail, a dead <laughs> pigeon, and a rat in my backyard. I think I could make that. I think I could. Yeah, do. yeah. It would last yeah. for a couple of weeks anyway. <laughs> <laughs> don't yeah. Don't actually taxidermy. Just like mm, just nail it. <laughs> 
just nail it, nail it, and paint it up a bit. Turn yeah. it up. Yeah. Paint it up. Uh, highlighters, Art. highlighters, yeah. and stuff. Keep yeah. it in the fridge until you have to sell it. Perfect. Put it in my doodle sack. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Put that in your doodle stack and blow it. <laughs> exactly. You know, we got to do these quarantine crafts. Everyone's oh. bacon oh. bread. Not enough people are uh, using dead yard birds to make art. True. And yep, that's so true. Shame. So true. If we can only combine the two, then mm, that's oh. a delicious baking dead bread. 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 Yeah. yeah. Mm. It is time for our final round, the lightning round. Oh boy. In this round, I will ask questions rapid oh. fire. And uh, whoever I hear answer correctly first gets the point. Uh, oh. Going into this round, also I need to say, going into this round, oh boy. Uh, way behind. <laughs> Not <laughs> as behind as Daniel, who has three <laughs> points. Sean, you have four points, and Heather is kicking nine. butt with nine points. Oh my goodness. But every question in this round is worth a point, so okay. shout out your answers. All right. I've seen it happen. Miracles can happen, like flying rats. Here we mm -hmm. go. <laughs> question number one, what is nine times three? 27. 27. 27. What is the formula <laughs> for water? H2O. H2O. I think that was Sean. Uh, black, green, and oolong are types of what? Tea. Tea. Very good. Uh, how many years ago was 1997? 23. 23. Good, Heather. What state is Las Vegas in? Nevada. Oh, I think that was Sean. Uh, what sport? Uses a basketball. 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 Ah, yes. What? <laughs> the quote, there's no place like home, is from what movie? Wizard, Wizard of Oz. Oz. Wizard of Oz. Oh, what? Spell the word ocean. O C E A N. That was everyone. I'll give it to Daniel. What <laughs> month is it? Uh, June. June. <laughs> oh, come on, you guys. It is June. Who played Michael Scott in The Office? The US Steve Carell. Steve Carell. Daniel, what is the largest country by area? Russia. 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 Very good. Daniel, Belle was a Disney princess in this. Beauty and the Beast. Oh, good job, Sean. Mm -hmm. Who painted the Mona Lisa? Da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci. Heather, what is the third letter of the alphabet? C. 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 Sean, what is the biggest planet? Jupiter. Jupiter. Oh, Sean, good job. Okay, let me tally your points. I'll do Daniel's just to be nice. <laughs> All right. At the end of the lightning round, we have an honorable mention to the lovely and hilarious Daniel Karen. Well done, Daniel, with seven points. Yeah. Good job. Oh, yeah. You win points for coolness. <laughs> Thank you. I do see how you are a bad boy now. And yeah. I stole those sunglasses <laughs> from your grandmother at a bowling alley. From my grandmother, yeah. <laughs> and with eleven points, pulling through at the last minute, we have Sean Cullen. Well done, Sean. Second place, and with an unprecedented runaway victory and thirteen points, we have. Heather Hurst. Congratulations, Heather. Thank you. Oh, Heather. Thank you. Thank you Congratulations. all. Congratulations. These little town you. blues <laughs> aren't hurting me now. Flowers. <laughs> big apple. Big apple. Big apple, baby. Yeah, big, big apple, apple luck. baby. <laughs> Thank you all so, so much for being on the show. Everyone at home, please remember to share and like and subscribe. Uh, so that we can, uh, you know, let the Kennedys know that Heather's been telling lies about them. Right. Uh, <laughs> Wasn't though? She actually did flirt with. Uh, oh, that's true. That's true. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Name redacted Kennedy. All right. Thank yeah. you so much, everyone. <laughs>